Hello everyone, welcome back to Fiction Author Business School. Question for you, do you have a great character arc but don't know how to end it? Or how about a plot or a story thread but you're totally blocked as to how to wrap things up? So you get through most of the story that you have planned but you're just not sure how to do the ending, right? Has this ever happened to you? If so, this episode is for you. I'm going to teach you a way to think about the end of character arcs or story threads that hopefully keep you from ever getting ending block again, okay? It'll just help you think about it in a different way so that you can always work through it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay tuned. Hi there, aspiring fiction author. Welcome to Fiction Author Business School. Do you want to write your stories with ease and confidence? Do you find yourself Googling how to write a fiction book or how to write a character arc? If you want to create a fiction empire, but you can't even finish the story you're currently working on, and you find yourself doubting it will even be good enough? Hi, I'm Liesl. I too have been writing stories since I was just a kid. I wanted to do something about my fiction writing dreams, but got information overload every time I looked for writing help, because there's just so much out there on the internet. I wanted confidence that I wouldn't disappoint my readers, and a plan to publish regularly. I knew the foundation of any author career, including the marketing aspect, is a stellar and well-written story, but I didn't know how to be sure that my story was solid. I went on a journey to figure out what really makes readers tick and how to incorporate those addictive elements into my story. In this podcast, you'll find specific tactical fiction writing tips, solutions to writing more words more efficiently, and secrets to mastering your author mindset. So put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a notebook and pen and some chocolate, and let's write some fiction. Okay, so when it comes to endings, I do have a quick story to tell you. I had a really hard time figuring out how to end things when I was starting out. And I think it's just because I had read so many, you know, epic books, epic stories that had such fantastic conclusions that I actually found myself at a loss as to how to end any of my stories. Now, I had... I've had at least two series that I've already written ends to. One was my historical fiction uh, trilogy, and the other was a five-book crime fiction series. And both of them, I just felt, felt so inadequate as to how to come up with an ending that would be really fitting for the story and really satisfying and that readers would like, okay? And it was just felt like so much more than just, oh, give them a happy ending or something like that. I wanted to know what the science was, almost the, uh, you know, sort of story science behind creating a really stellar ending for your story, no matter what that ending was. There should be a way to figure it out, right? Well, eventually, I knew that I had to wait for the ending of one of my favorite series that I was reading. Uh, those of you who've listened to me before have heard this, but I loved the Wheel of Time series, and that was totally different than either of the two series I was writing at the time because it was high fantasy. But this was a big series. It's very long. It's very sprawling. It's 14 books. All of them are like dictionary-sized doorstoppers, right? And I loved it. I loved everything about the story. I loved the characters. I loved the arcs. I loved the world. I loved all the action and the battles and all of it. And I came to a point where I realized I might not be able to finish one of my series until this series finished. And that's kind of a, a dumb thing to think. You know, that was just me and my writer brain kind of second guessing myself and, and thinking that I just didn't have it in me to figure it out. So I wanted to wait. At the time, I think I was writing the end of Street Games, or I was coming up on it anyway, and I just wanted to wait for the end of this epic series before I could really nail down what my ending of, that, of my own series would be. Well, long story short, I, I was really actually afraid that the end of the series would disappoint me because I had it up on such a high pedestal that no matter how good it was, it might still feel a little disappointing just because I loved that other series so much. Um, but actually that was not the case, thankfully, gratefully. I mean, it had a stellar ending. It was better than I could have hoped for. And I don't think that even then I really was able to figure out the science behind it, but it just, the way that it made me feel emotionally, I realized that I was overthinking it. I was definitely just trying way too hard and when it comes right down to it the end of a story just needs to feel satisfactory to the reader now of course that's very nebulous like how do you know it feels satisfactory how do you know it's going to be satisfying for the reader how do you know that 
you know, we can really second guess ourselves, even if we are satisfied with the ending, are we bringing it across well enough to the reader or vice versa? Maybe we're not satisfied with the ending because we tend to be really nitpicky about our own stories, but maybe it's wonderful for the reader and we're just really overthinking it and being too hard on ourselves. Okay. So how do we know whether our stories are going to be satisfying at the end and how to end those character arcs, how to bring the threads together, right? Well, this is where you are gonna actually get out your pen and notebook or whatever it is you're using to take notes because what I really want you to do is I'm gonna give you some questions to consider and if you can answer these questions, then you'll be able to figure out your ending always, no matter what your story is about. So before I get to them, I'm gonna go back to my favorite definition of what story is. Story is a metaphor for a journey that leads to change. And change is the key operative word there, okay? This, the character has to change. If the character starts and ends exactly the same, you do not have a story. You have the snippet of a story, okay? Now, there are different types of change. There are different types of character arcs, for sure. And I'm actually going to probably go over the different types of character arcs you can write next week. But... Either way, there's a change somewhere. There's either an internal change or an external change or the world changes or something, right? The story is the metaphor for the journey that leads to that change. So question number one, write this down. Where is the change in your story? Whether you're talking about a character arc or a story thread or whatever you're you know, struggling with, what change occurs in the story you're telling? And then ask yourself, what would be a 180 degree difference between the beginning and the ending? Okay, so if you're someone who struggles with the end, go back to your beginning. What is the character like at the beginning? What is their world like? What is their life like? And what would be a change from that? Okay, so if the character starts out weak, they need to end up strong. If they start out um, in bondage, they need to end up free. If we're talking romance, if they're starting out single, they need to end up in a relationship of some kind, right? there's an opposite end, end of things there, right? So let's look at some examples. Um, I thought of Moana for this one at the beginning. She's stuck on her island. She doesn't have any freedom. She doesn't have the respect of her father. And she's not listening to her heart or to the, the sea that is calling her. By the time she gets back to the end, she actually is back on the island, but she's a different person. Okay, now she has the respect of her people. She knows what to do to save them from their island that is dying. She has found who she is. She's so much more confident in being who she is. So you have these changes that have taken place, right? Um, next question you're going to ask, number two. How will the character or the world transform? Hot tip for you. The transformation has to take place before the ending, and once the transformation is complete, you're allowed to end your story. So let's take a look at something like The Hunger Games. At the beginning, Katniss was, just like all the people in her land, they were kind of imprisoned, as it were, to the capital. I mean, maybe not literally with bars or anything, but they were under the capital's thumb. They were being very oppressed, okay? She was living in a world where she had to do what they say, where she had to break rules just to feed her family and keep them, you know, living and that sort of thing. Um, she also was not in a relationship. She did not know who she was. And there was kind of a sense of freedom at the end that she had overcome a lot of these things. So once she had overcome the Hunger Games and she had overcome the capital and she did put down another um, really oppressive leader, then we had the ending of the story. Now, I'm, I know I'm really oversimplifying that. Hunger Games book fans are probably yelling at me right now, but I, I am being overly simplistic here so that you can understand where the ending was. If you were writing that story, if you were Suzanne Collins and you were trying to figure out where to end it, you've got to figure out what transformation you're going for for Katniss. And once you finally hit that transformation or maybe a transformation of the world she lives in, then you can end the story. Okay. So that's the next question you have to ask yourself, how will either the character or the world they're in transform? And once the transformation is complete, then you can end your story. All right. Next question. Number three, what type of ending do you want? Okay, are you going for a happy ending where the character achieves their aims? Are you going for a sad ending? Are you going for them to be triumphant and actually gain the thing that they were trying to achieve the entire story? Or are you going more for something really dark and tragic? Okay, you have to decide what kind of story you want because 
obviously that's going to affect the ending. That's going to affect what you do with the ending, um, where you take the character. So in the stories I've named so far, Moana and Hunger Games, even though there was definitely some tragedy involved in, in Hunger Games, there was a lot of tragedy, in the end, they did sort of get what they want, even if there was a high cost for it, okay? But maybe we think of something more like... Um, Blood Diamond. Blood Diamond, I always give a little bit of a um, disclaimer with this. It's an R-rated film, and it's really rough. It's got a lot of violence in it, but it's a really excellent story arc, a really excellent character arc, so I do like to use it as an example. At the beginning, DiCaprio's character is actually painted as a really not very good guy, okay? He's very selfish. He's involved in the Blood Diamond trade. He was sort of born into it. And we do learn that he wants to get out of it, not necessarily for chivalrous reasons, but just because he's sick of it and he wants to have a little more freedom and live a more luxurious life. He's just done, you know. So he's very greedy throughout the, the film and he's trying to get a hold of something money-wise that will allow him to get out of this business. Um, so his motivations then are, like I said, they're definitely not chivalrous. They're very, very selfish, but he's trying to achieve something the entire film that will get him out of this life. And yes, I'm going to give you spoilers for it. He doesn't really achieve it because throughout the course of the movie, he actually becomes a better guy. He makes friends with um, another man who's trying to save his son and end up helping him. And his character changes and he ends up sort of sacrificing his life so that this man and his son can get out. Okay. So that really changes the ending. You have to know what kind of ending you want. If we were doing an ending where he was going to get out and get what he wanted, that would be very different than him sacrificing himself to save somebody else and not getting what he wants. So you have to be very, very clear on what type of ending you're going for. And you may be saying, well, yeah, but how do I figure that out? Well, <laughs> that's not something I can tell you. You just have to decide what you really are trying to say and what kind of story you're trying to tell. Is it a sort of shock value f story where, you know, like a cautionary tale where the character is not going to get what they want because you're trying to show that their, their way of life or their decisions led to that? Or are you going for a more, you know, happily ever after they are going to get what they want, they are going to transcend. Either one is fine. You just have to decide which one it is. And that's going to depend on the type of story you want to tell and the type of character you're dealing with, right? But you need to understand your ending in order to be able to end the character arc, right? And maybe if you're struggling with it a little bit, you could do an exercise where you... You know, even if you thought you were going to end it as happily ever after, and maybe you still will, you could sort of, you know, jot down some ideas for the opposite side of, type of ending. Like, what if I made this tragic? What if the character really didn't get what they wanted in the end? What would that look like? And even if you don't end up going with that ending because you don't like that, it might still give you a lot of insight into what you do need to do for the opposite type of ending, okay? A lot of times, guys, it's just about journaling. It's just about relaxing your mind and letting the ideas flow, and you'll end up coming up with things that will work. Um, the fourth and final question is, what is your story's theme and did you bring it across? Now, this is a lot more complicated, this question. Most authors, when they start out, they don't know what their story theme is. They may not know what the overarching theme is. But if you've written most of your story and you're just struggling with the ending, by that time, you really ought to know what it is, okay? It has to do with the character transformation. It has to do with the journey they're on that leads to change. Whatever the biggest change or the bigger transformation in the character is, is what your story theme is probably going to be, right? So let's look in a, at an example. So let's look at um, The Two Towers, the second Lord of the Rings movie. The real transformation there and the real theme comes across near the end uh, in Sam's speech where he talks about how people in the epic stories had lots of chances to turn back, but they didn't because they knew that there was something worth fighting for, right? That was kind of the speech or the part that made that whole movie that everybody loved. Um, so that's what I'm talking about. If you figure out your story theme, you have to bring it across. Once you've got that, if you have brought it across to the reader through the events of the story and illustrated it really well, then at that point you can feel safe ending your story. If you feel like you really haven't illustrated it very well, well, why not? What, what is lacking that you need to illustrate that theme? You should be through what the character goes through, through the events that happen in the story, you're, you're showing that theme playing out in their life and in their journey. So ask yourself, what is your story theme and did you bring it across? I think they did that very well in the second Lord of the Rings movie, right? through what Frodo was going through as well as what the other characters were going through. So that's a really good example, okay? 
So once again, let's go back through these to recap. How do you figure out what the end of your story is going to be? You have to ask yourself these questions. Where is the change? Number one, what change will either the character or the world go through? And what would be a 180 degree difference from how they were at the beginning? If you have shown that change, that character transformation or the world transforming so that it is different than it was at the beginning, then you're probably safe to end your story. Uh, number two, uh, how will the character or the world transform? Because when the transformation takes place, that's when you can end your story. Number three, what type of ending do you want? Happy, sad, triumphant, dark, tragic, figure it out because whatever is going to happen, however you're going to do the ending is going to affect the way that you close the character arcs. A tragic ending is going to be very different than a triumphant ending, right? So you need to know what that is and maybe consider both sides, kind of run through scenarios of both and see which one is going to serve your story better. And finally, number four, what is your story theme and did you bring it across efficiently enough through the events that happen in the story and through what the character decides. If yes, then you are probably safe to end your story. So if you are struggling with how to figure out the ending, then you need to journal on these four questions. Just let the words and the ideas flow. Let anything come out that you you know, that possibly crosses your brain. You're not going to use it all or maybe even very much of it, but it will help you to figure out your ending. And you need to know the answers to these questions because if you haven't accomplished these things in your story, if you haven't shown the change, if you haven't shown the transformation, if you haven't brought the theme across, then of course you're having trouble ending your story because it doesn't feel complete yet. You need those things in order to be complete, okay? So for your homework, I want you to take whatever it is you're working on. And even if you already know what the ending is going to be and you don't really need help with this for your current work in progress, that's okay. But still, I would challenge you to journal on at least one of these questions, okay? The most obvious one is what change will your character or your world undergo? Um, nail that down and you're well on your way to figuring out your ending and having a really solid grip on your story and where it's going. And then of course you can move on to the other three questions, okay? So I hope that was helpful to you this week. Um, it was a question that came to me when doing some story coaching, which you guys uh, heard on the podcast last week and you guys seem to enjoy. Um, if this is something you're struggling with, if there's really any aspect of your story you're struggling with, if you don't know what your overarching story theme is, if you don't feel like your characters are fleshed out enough and you don't well, know them well enough to know what they're going to do next in the story or how they're going to react to the events of the story, if you're struggling with your ending, if you're struggling with your beginning, if you're struggling with that soggy middle that always seems to bow downward, you know, and we tend to get bogged down in anything like that, you can sign up for Master Storyteller Coaching with me. Um, the link will be in the show notes and I will help get you unstuck and help get you on your way to hashing out your story and really making it a super successful book that you can put out there for people to read. Okay. In the meantime, happy storytelling this week. Happy writing, happy hashing out of your endings. And I will see you here next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Thanks so much for listening today. Before you go, would you be willing to do me a solid? If you found any value at all in this episode today, would you be willing to share it with other authors just like you in the hopes that they might find some value in it as well? Happy story crafting this week. Remember, only you can bring the world the unique story that you are trying to tell. Only you can succeed in your own unique way in getting it out of your mind and your heart and into a medium where it can reach thousands if not millions of salivating readers. You don't have to worry about failure because there is always a market for awesome.